one, one key element that I should probably add to that is in, into this sort of stew of my background, which is that, that uh, I also have six children. So uh, no refuting, Rebecca. You can re refute things, refute things later. Uh, just, no, Rebecca has actually been a, an extraordinary contributor. Uh, actually, you know, Paul and I are both converts, so Rebecca is also was actually became a Catholic before us. She made her first, first communion a little bit before we became Catholics, and she has been one of our great inspirations, I would say, as as Catholics, and was has been very much part of all my all my thinking about Catholic family life, as you can imagine. Um, now, I, I, I speak here today with some trepidation, as I'm sure is always the case of people who speak here. It's a little like preaching to the choir. Uh, so I, I hope you will forgive me if I say a good many things that you already know already. Uh, but I just wanted to think about some things with you and then provide some, some resources. I want to talk just a little, let me just kind of tell you what, I, I have sort of an, an abundance of material and also some material that end up, ended up falling through the cracks because I was going to show you some things that are available online, but it turned out we can't get online today, and the things that I had archived, I couldn't w draw up on out of my archives today. You know how, as I say to my students, whenever you're working with electronic things, always bring your books, because you can't be sure it'll work. You know, always bring your books. So in fact, I did bring lots of books and CDs and things to show you that I'd be happy to pass around and so forth later. But let me just tell you the, 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 the basic points I want to make and then, uh, talked about them a little bit more in, <coughs> in, in some depth and detail. I want to emphasize the, I mean, we all know about the liturgical year, but I want to emphasize how incredibly, aside from beautiful, how incredibly useful the liturgical year is to us as parents and teachers and also individual Catholics. But the liturgical year is stupendously, I hate to use the word, so pragmatic word, but so useful because we can hang all the Christian tradition on the liturgical year and make it work for people of every age and level of understanding. So it can work for very tiny children and it can work for people who've, who are very elderly and who've really lost their marbles. It can work for everybody. It works for men, it works for women. Works, it, it is, you can, it, you, it can, you can pitch it at every level and that's one of the things that make it so extraordinarily rich. So I'll come back to this in more detail. And then I want to talk a little bit about, I mean, some of these things obviously you know already, but you may not know the kinds of things that are now available online and on CD-ROMs and CDs for Catholics. It is really extraordinarily exciting. I mean, for those of you who live near here, you have this beautiful library upstairs that I salivate over every time I come to Ivy Hall, and it's really stupendous, but most of us don't have access to so beautiful and complete and, and elegant uh, a library as there is here. So it's nice to know, and of course you can't buy everything, even at the nicest Catholic bookstore, you can't buy everything, although sometimes I've tried, but you can't buy everything. So it's nice to know that there are all kinds of things that you can see and find and, and send your children to online, because you know, if you're dealing with young people, this is the generation that does things online. So it's very nice to be able to, not that you want to send them, how should we say, unaccompanied, uh, necessarily online, depending on, on the age of the child and the level of sophistication, but because there's all kinds of garbage out there, but there's all kinds of great stuff. So if you lead them along, you can find very, very cool things. So the things that I'm, I'm not able to show you from uh, on, on my online, uh, uh, how should we say, all my other favorites I had lined up for you, I've given you my email address on the handout, and feel free to contact me if you want to find some of these things and and you can't do it, I'm, I'm, I'm available. <coughs> so let me talk just a little bit about the liturgical year in general, and just in the, in the w with regard to a, a few aspects. Obviously, the, as you all know, the liturgical year starts uh, at, at Advent, extending through the Christmas season, and for diehards like me, that is old medievalists, it really goes to the Feast of the Purification in early February. It was really originally a very long season, uh, and a very rich and, and, and variegated season. And that's, that's the, the, the way the year begins. Obviously, the, the other great liturgical season for Catholics is, and, and which is in fact a much more ancient season, really going back to the beginning of the, of the church, is the season of, of, of Lent and Easter going up through, through Pentecost. And so we have these two, these two great templates. One of them fixed, that is based on a solar calendar, 
based on the Roman calendar, and the other a movable feast based on the Jewish tradition. So we have these two great templates, one fixed, one sliding around the spring, as it were, uh, and representing the two great traditions from which Catholicism arose, that is the Jewish tradition and the Roman, and the Roman tradition. Um, and then, <coughs> so then we have long stretches interspersed with these, and then between them, long stretches of what we can call ordinary time. But of course, even ordinary time is filled with feasts of the saints. And uh, I, I'm, a, like most of you, I'm sure, a devotee of, of the saints. And there are all kinds of, I want to show you a little bit the kinds of resources that are available to us as we look at the, at the feasts of the saints. Now, one of the great strengths, I think, of the liturgical year is that through it we relive the life of Christ, we relive the life of Mary and the history of devotion to Mary. Uh, all the teachings, we can really think of it as, as bringing up through the course of the year all the great teachings of the church, um, all, the, all its particular emphases, lots of historical movement, m movements of development. We come to know the Bible in the most important way, I think, I mean I'm sure I there are people who might argue with me on this, but we come to know the Bible in what is, to me, its most important way, which is as filtered through the liturgy, as mediated and s surrounded by prayer in the liturgy, where its, m its messages are brought, are made very loud and clear. So we, we s we, we're not just reading the Bible on our own with our own particular problems or our own particular interpretive framework, our own particular obsessions, but we're we're, we're hearing the Bible as presented through the church, through the, liturgic, through the themes of the liturgical year. I think the liturgical year also has a, I've been thinking a lot about this recently, has a psychological usefulness in that it brings us out of our private moods, our, our, our own particular issues, into, as it were, the mood of the church. The, the, the year has all these different moods. I mean, it's just been through Lent with one whole series of set of, of moods and attitudes and ways of thinking about ourselves and our lives. And now we're in the Easter season where we shift gears. And I think it's a very useful corrective to our own, our own particular you know, mindset and set of feelings. So we, we learn to think and feel with the heart of the church and not just with our own personal heart. So, these are just two or three thoughts on, on the power and usefulness of the liturgical year. So but now the question f is for us as Catholics and as Catholic parents in many cases, and as in my case now increasingly Catholic grandparents and, and, and friends of, of, of Catholic children, how can we make use of this? How can we draw on, on, these, on the, the richness of all this? So <coughs> uh, let me just make a few points here. Um, it is particularly, let me, instead of, of, of dividing this up, let's say, by age group, I think the way to think about it is that for every kind of, every moment of the year and every kind of theme, it can be pitched to every age. So you just need to be thinking about the, the kinds of capacities of the people you're dealing with. To some degree, all the things that I'm suggesting are things that we can do privately. But there are also things that we can talk about with our families, that we can encourage our, our children to think about or our grandchildren to think about. So they're not, uh, we, we don't need to think of them as, as only appropriate to a, a, particular, a particular age group. Um, one, one reason why I think it's Im important to get children, actually to bring these things to children when they're very young and to keep raising the bar, as it were, is that I, I see in the academic world, I see in college, many in graduate school, many, many children, I also see this in my colleagues, but many children who were Catholic until confirmation. And then that was it. They were out the door. And many of them never a attained an adult understanding of Catholicism. So they were taught the things that you learn in the you know, kindergarten, the first grade, the sixth grade, whatever, and then they were gone. And they think, so b because they learned it as children, they think that ch Catholicism is childish and childlike. So I think it's very important for us to keep thinking, what is the next step in understanding of all this material, all this richness that this person is able to do? And to keep pushing them to, to keep growing in this and not to just think, well, I've got it, I've, I, now I understand. 
you know, I've got it set. I'm, I, can, I can just uh, rest now. Um, now. So I want to talk first a little bit about, about some of the possibilities in, in, in talking about the, the, the liturgical year. I think it's very important to talk to children about, and I mean, well, talk to children, talk to ourselves, talk to anybody we can get our hands on. Uh, and in, in, in the ways in which I can do it, I do it in college courses as well, but obviously in a more, how should we say, a more subtle, subtle manner. Uh, uh, thinking about the shape, the meaning and shape of a, of a particular season. Um, and you can certainly talk to children a good deal. I mean, the children go to church. Uh, one of the wonderful things about Catholicism is that children really are there throughout the, throughout the service and are really, you know, are, are feeling it in and taking it in by osmosis because, after all, the, the, the colors change, the, litur the liturgical colors change. The, the, the church is full of a kind of what they call in psychology redundancy. That is, the messages come through at so many different levels. So to, to some degree, they're just taking all this in with os by osmosis just seeps in like, like into a sponge. But I think it's also important to talk to them. What, what season are we in right now? What is, what is happening in the church? What kinds of colors are we seeing? What kinds of music are we singing? What, what, you know, what, what's going on at this particular time of the year? Um, and you can also encourage children to do some research on this. Say, you know, I'd like to, I wish I understood more, I wish I understood more about the Feast of Pentecost or something like that, because now, one of the things I wanted to show you was the Catholic Encyclopedia. Uh, the whole Catholic Encyclopedia is now online, which is an, an, a stupendous thing to have. It's, a, it's on your list, on your hand out there, at newadvent.org. Um, and it has all kinds of, uh, I mean, you know, you can look up anything. And it's, it's much better than the new Catholic Encyclopedia. I mean, I happen to own it, the Catholic Encyclopedia, and I'm sure it's here. But it's, you know, it's like, <coughs> I mean, you know, 18 volumes. So it's a great big thing. So now you can just call it up online, and you can send your children to look up, look up some. It also has very interesting, you know, Catholic advertising and, you know, things, you know, things that you can buy. It has all kinds of other uh, links with it and all kinds of other information. But you can, you can send children to do research on, or to do a little reading. You know, come and, come and talk to us at the dinner table about this. Explain this to us so that we understand it better. So that, you know, as, as your children get older and more competent, you can encourage them to do this kind of thing. Um, I, I, I think it's very important to just talk to children <coughs> about some of these things. I remember, I mean, our children had no Catholic grandparents since we were both converts, but I remember so clearly the things that my mother, when I was growing up, would read and then just talk to us about, just talk to me about. I remember when she read The Sea Around Us when I was, I don't know when this would have been, I was a, a small, small child, and she read The Sea Around Us, and every, every night or every day she would just talk to me about what she'd been reading about, and it was way past my capacity. I was maybe, you know, five or six or something, a little kid, but she, she would just talk to me about what she'd been, these wonderful things she'd been reading around, about in The Sea Around Us. So I think that in a sense, for younger children, we can keep filtering these things through to them. Um, if they're not old enough to read about them, we can read about them and just tell them about them. Um, now, one tremendous advantage to the Catholic year, is to the liturgical year, is that it's never boring because, uh, because of the, the, the constant changing. So every, not only every season, but every day has a new theme. And that's one of the, is, as I say, one of its great richnesses, that it never, I mean, there are children who can get bored, think they're bored with going to Mass. But the more you can make them understand how it changes all the time, that it's like a kaleidoscope, there, you, know, uh, you know, one of those chandeliers that has mirrors, that are, it's constantly shifting. So that if they follow these shifts, they will be drawn in uh, to the, shifts in message and, and emphasis from week to week or, or day to day. Um, now, you can also encourage them to do work just on the history of the Christian year as, as it came into existence, because it has an extremely interesting history. And, you know, came in the course of, oh, basically from like the, well, it started in the second and first and second centuries and really goes goes all the way up through the end of the Middle Ages, and it keeps adding new, new dimensions and new themes. And this is the kind of thing on which you can send them to the Catholic Encyclopedia, 
or other kinds of reading. Or I can, if you, if you email me, I can give you some other thoughts of places to go or places to send, uh, send, send children or send yourselves. Uh, now on the saints, uh, there are all kinds of resources. Every family should have, you know, <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, every family should own, you know, a couple of dictionaries of the saints. Of course, now you can, I mean, I, I will show you in just a second, you can get it on, on, on a CD-ROM. Uh, but, and there are all kinds of calendars and so forth that you can get online. But there are, the, I, I uh, brought for you, for anybody who wants to see it, I don't know where it went now. Oh, here it is. There's a, an Oxford Dictionary of the Saints. There's a Penguin Dictionary of the Saints. There's also the Great Butler's Lives of the Saints in four volumes, which is really the thing to own if you get really interested in the Saints. Um, oops, I think I lost my... I think I lost... Oh, that's my watch. Okay, that's not my... Um, uh, but you, everybody needs to have a Dictionary of the Saints and a good calendar of the Saints. And... Uh, because they are so, you know, there, there are so many of them and you have so much variety. I mean, you could spend a whole year just kind of thinking about, you know, e each year pick a, different, pick, a, pick a different nationality. You could spend a year on, you know, Eastern European saints, you know, uh, uh, English and Welsh and Irish saints. I mean, you, there's just, you have so many different themes. You can, they are truly inexhaustible as a topic. Now, I wanted to show you just a little bit this CD... Hmm. Is it, it, is it screens? Oh, goody. Okay. That, okay. So this is a CD-ROM. As I say, I can't get online, but I bought this very inexpensive CD-ROM, which I can show you for like 30 bucks, you know, of Butler's Lives of the Saints. And it's actually very neat. Let me just show you. If I can... Where's my thing here? Okay, wait a minute. Um, let's go to the home page. Let me get a little louder. Oops. I was just trying to make it louder. Well, I didn't mean to discourage it. Wait a minute. I didn't want to be tampered with. Never mind. So, this is really quite an amazing thing. It has all of Butler's Lives of the Saints. Let me just show you a little bit. All right, all right. Has all the patron saints, has novenas to the saints. I mean, it's really, really quite a, quite a, quite a thing. Um, I was just pointing out to Rebecca and I were just looking at, now what, hang on a second, go back. Okay, so <laughs> we were looking at the saint for against pro, for procrastination, which many of us <laughs> many of us suffer from. Um, but this, I mean, here's this great list, and it's a wonderful thing to send your children to, you know, or your grandchildren to. It's really, and I can tell you where to where to. I think I put on the thing where to buy it, but it's it's really quite neat, you know, it, you know. So horses, horses, horses. <laughs> Martin of Tours, well, he was riding a horse, you know, when, when, the, when the beggar approached him. Some of these, uh, oh, the, the saint for procrastination, yeah, I, actually, I didn't give you the punchline, is expeditus, which I think is, <laughs> <laughs> was very funny. I, I also like Adam for horticulturalist, don't you guys? The original, the original horticulturist. Um, I mean, there's, a, there's a, quite a sense of humor in some of these things, I have to say. Um, uh, but I mean, getting, for example, getting children involved in in, in patron saints is is really great. I mean, their own patron saint, the patron saint of activities that they're involved in, and you can also uh, you can also if something very important happens in a child or some member of your family's life, you can also say, well, now whose feast is this today? You know, this is another way of anchoring anchoring your children and, and yourselves in in the life of the church. In my own case. I remember several years ago I was involved in an ugly argument at the university and it was quite unpleasant and it got resolved one day and I said, I want to know whose feast this is. So it's, it was resolved on the feast of St. Scholastica. And every time her year ro rolls around, it, was, it, it would just by chance, you know, every time, 
every time her year rolls around, I think, yes, thank you, Saint Scholastic. It was very, but there, it's these are all the ways in which, in a sense, we we tie our children and ourselves to the church, and to the love of God. I mean, obviously, the church year wouldn't matter if it weren't if it weren't that what it's really about is the love of God. But it's tying them to the family, tying them to the faith, tying them tying them by these really very powerful um, bonds uh, to their faith. Uh, and it's, it's important that these things are not just intellectual because we can all see how easy it is. I certainly see all the time, and I know Paul does, and I'm sure Rebecca has, how often, you know, students come to college, they had a kind of intellectual faith, and they come and they're out the door, you know, because they think, now I'm a grown-up, I'm thinking for myself, I don't need these things. But all these practices are things that can, that, that, that connect them, them to the year and them to the faith through, through, the, through the saints. Um.